Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, Skilled Workers Wanted. Also, the V-Team goes looking for the missing gaming commission. And did Robert Bentley break the rules? Why not? Because he broke the rules. What rules? We didn't see any rules, did we, Charlie? Wrong, sir. Wrong. Under Section 37B of the contract signed by him, it states quite clearly that all offers shall become null and void if, and you can read it for yourself in this photostatic copy, I, the undersigned, shall forfeit all rights, privileges, and licenses herein and herein contained, etc., etc., fax mentis incendium gloria culpum, etc., etc., memo bis punitor delicatum. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized, so you get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. Well, I don't think you can impeach him with that. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by the V-Team. Welcome all. Hello. Hi. Hi. Good morning. Welcome back from California. Yeah, it was bright and sunny, and yeah. it was wonderful. Well, I wish they all could be California girls, don't you, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, this past week, we have dealt with nothing, because they've been out of town. Thank God. But we realize that they are coming when they get back with a new prison bill, Susan. How many is that? I think we're up to five or six now. And the weird thing is, is if you count the days, it's six in about a week and a half. Right. They just keep rolling mm -hmm. and keep rolling, trying to find something, because apparently what they're doing is not going to work. Well, Jack, they really want these prisons. Uh, they've made it so it's no longer a Bentley bill. Now it looks like Alan Farley's got a bill that's going to put this onto the state or onto the counties. One came out of the Senate that was going to go, you get two prisons with counties footing the bill. Yeah, have we decided who the counties are? Well, uh, we know Elmore is one. We don't know. The other one may be uh, Scambia, is it? Or uh, down... Scam well, being the... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but so the counties are basically going to have to raise the money, probably mm -hmm. through bonds, to right. pay for these Correct. prisons. And then they're going to do lease to own back to the state. So oh. the state's going to slowly buy them back. From Over the a 30 year period, yes. And in 30 years, won't it be probably time for maybe you, to consider any prisons I, again? You, I don't think any citizen of Alabama really has a problem with building new prisons. I mean, they're deplorable, they're in bad shape, there's no mental health component. We, we get that. It was just the shady way yeah, that's right. that Absolutely. these bills were drafted and who was going to do the design, who was going to do the build, you know, who, you know, it, it, there were too many unanswered questions. And I think there's still unanswered questions, and I agree with you, but we're, we're not addressing Tutwiler, mm -mm. which was built in the 20s, that is a hellhole that they put lipstick on a pig down there. Exactly. We've asked to go tour uh, Tutwiler, we hope, because we've toured Elmore. And we've asked multiple people, not just one. We've, we've toured Elmore, we've toured uh, St. Clair. Clair. But one of the things that we learned this week that we did not fully understand, you know, we've always heard that the, it cost the state $42 a day to house and feed mm -hmm. prisoners. So when the sheriffs came forward and said, hey, we can do it, you know, all you got to do is give us $15 a day. We thought, great, right? 15, 24, do the math, it's good. No, 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 it's not how it works. $42 a day is the average to run the entire system. 
So if you move a prisoner, that $42 doesn't go with them. That $42 just stays in the system. So it's 42 plus. Right. It, it, and the way they come up with the 42 is they take, you know, the, the gross uh, allotment for the corrections, and then they divide it by, you know, an average of how many prisoners they, and that's where the $42 comes from. So once you move a prisoner out of this system and put them in the counties, which is, I don't think, a bad idea, mm -hmm. you are increasing the cost by 15, so now you go from 42 to 57. Right, and then you, you have the, it was something that folks don't understand is that county sheriffs, they get uh, X amount of dollars, uh, they feed uh, their prisoners bath and it and whatever money's left over they get to keep right I mean it's they have an incentive to keep their costs low to manage these things effectively and when it comes to their prisoners they want to make sure that they're getting the care they need proactively because if they're not then they start dealing with overhead costs and all of that going up I mean I just think we've got to find a way here to make sure that our prisoners are getting the care they need before it gets to this well and, and in some instances uh, with sheriffs, I've been told they were feeding the prisoners corn dogs twice a day oh, or bologna twice well, a that's day, a, that's and that's been Decatur's adjudicated. Up in, yeah. yeah, up in Decatur. There's right. one in Morgan Decatur County, uh -huh. and, uh, right now, so that, that needs to be fixed. Yeah, right. If we're going to send the prisoners back there. I do love a there. good corn dog and a bologna sandwich. I, yeah, but twice a day. <laughs> twice a day. In college. <laughs> Well, that, there you go. Uh, I think w before we move on, what other interesting thing is, though, if these counties build these prisons, isn't there incentive to keep them full? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So that whole justice reform thing, we, yeah. versus right. I got to have the money from the state for my prison. Right. It worries me. It, it worries me. It can me. all get really stinky real fast. We still just haven't seen the money in the budget to help have more corrections officers, right. mm -hmm. more mental health assistance, more of what we need to make sure that what we do have runs effectively. Right. We can build every castle in the world, but if we don't have the people to keep it running smoothly, we don't have a system. Rest and, assured, and, and no the, castles will be of built. Of course, but uh, the <laughs> legislation... Right. Well, well that's, a, that's a honeymoon retreat. But the, the legislation that has to be separate from Medicaid and all of mm -hmm. those, but why can't they run in tandem with the building of the new prison? I don't understand why that legislation hasn't surfaced yet. Well, because inmates can still be on Medicare and Medicaid. Mm -hmm. So you're still having to process the payments. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot going on. We've got about two more minutes, and I want to get to this, the situation with Governor Robert Bentley. We have compared him to a man who's in a... In a, in a room and there's no lock on the door and the door swings inwards and he keeps pushing and he can't get out. Uh, on April 5th, we are led to believe by good sources that the Ethics Commission will come forward with some evidence of possible wrongdoing and Beth, we're afraid there will be a stampede in the House to impeach. Right, I mean, what I'm worried that the Ethics Commission hasn't done a whole lot right, generally speaking. And so if they come out and they bottle this in a way that could interfere with criminal investigations that are going on, that's mm -hmm. one thing we've got to keep in mind. But then when they come out and they say, we believe he's violated A, B, and C statute, then if the House clamors to impeach but the Senate can't deliver, then what happens? Like, where are we at that point? Uh, it's like the musical chairs in the governor's office is what it's going to be. It's like poking a beehive is what it is, yeah. except the governor can't sting you because he doesn't have any and, and, leverage. And if the House uh, votes to impeach and the Senate doesn't, then we've got a war in the State House. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and the Senate's going to be blamed for not doing it, and the House is going to be blamed for doing it. Jack, how does that play out in the, out in the you know, well, the state? Yeah. Well, there's, you know, there's no public relations with impeaching a governor. That's for sure. Nobody's going to come out of this looking good. Bentley's not. The AG's office probably isn't. Ethics Commission might. That's where the complaint was filed. And then they're going to come back and perhaps say, we think he violated this, this, and this. They send a letter to the AG saying, this is what we found. What if the AG says, I don't want to hand? I mean, it's just a big well, circus. I mean, that's right. But, and you've had Matt Hart looking at this for some time. Him and his team have been looking at it, and they brought no charges uh, that we know of. And, 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 and now they're going to impeach this man for basically being a fool. I, I right. don't know that that's an impeachable offense, but we're going to have to leave it right there. <laughs> they better look in the mirror before they do it. Well, that cast the first stone deal certainly does work here. And point that one finger at you and point three back at me. 
Mm -hmm. Does anybody else want something before we go to the break? <laughs> All right, okay. you're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. Azia Medical Spa offers a relaxing experience using customized skincare treatments and full line of physician grade products with professionals that can assist you in determining which treatment options will best help you achieve your desired results. Azia's massage therapies are popular for rejuvenation and relaxation, as well as relief of tired, aching and sore muscles. Voted the best medical spa in Birmingham for three years in a row. Visit aziamedicalspa.com to schedule your appointment. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Jack, I don't know if you've seen them. They have not been widely circulated, but there are MIA shirts that are being circulated because no one can find Governor Bentley's gaming commission that was supposed to give us direction on how the state should go on a lottery and all this and that. Wasn't that commission chock full of legislators? I think it had a few chocks in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why. Yeah. Yeah. No. You know, Clinton Carter, Susan, is running that. Clinton Carter's a good guy. He's very organized. He's detailed. He, he, he knows the right thing to do. Why are they? What occurred that made them put this off? It was something because they met religiously right up until session. Then right before session, they said, well, you know, we're going to give ourselves some time. We're going to meet again in June. When we called them on that and said, you're punting it down the road, you're supposed to come back with this before session ever started, mm -hmm. they assured us that, oh, well, we're just giving ourselves that much time. We're probably going to come back and give a recommendation in March. Uh, hello? We're, ta we're knocking on April's door. And oh the, gosh, problem, the problem is the legislature will not move, I think, unless they have a recommendation mm -hmm. from that commission. Beth, what are they afraid of? You know, I don't know, and it all it comes down to everything in politics. If it doesn't make sense, follow the money. Mm -hmm. And so who's been cutting checks and where's it all going? And I think a lot of this has to do with the fact that we've got some big money gambling interests in the state that don't want to see any kind of expansion there. So, you know, I think they're just going to punt it till after session, and then they'll come out with something, wait on people to forget about it. The next year's session will come up again, and we'll just keep same song and dance. But next session is is pre-election. Uh, they're not going to touch a lottery bill no. in that. The no. only way that will work out, Jack, is if somebody was running for office, <clears throat> say like a Dale Marsh, and he said, I want to be governor, I want to be a hero to the people of Alabama, and shoved that thing through. So, because it's very popular, right? Yeah. That could help. But I heard him with the base, though. I just wish yeah. that the legislature were brave enough and the governor were brave enough to enact a constitutional amendment to allow the people to vote on whether or not they want gambling in Alabama. That would solve all That's this right. stuff. Let mm -hmm. people and vote. And it would take the Supreme Court out of it, well, which we need to. And the Supreme Court has made such foolish rulings because you, you can... You can have a machine down in Atmore at the Indians place or out here in Wetumpka that's the same and that's legal. And a machine over here in Victory Land that's illegal and they're the same machines. Or in Greene County, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we know uh, George Bex made that case, Susan. He did, he did. And you know, I, my understanding is for for a little while there, some of the Victory Land machines that were sitting at Atmore with the Victory Land stickers still on them. And, and that, and they're the same machines. And I now. think the Attorney General we have now is smart enough to ask the question, mm -hmm. how is it legal there and not here? Well, but the Supreme Court has tied people's hands with these foolish... Well, you know Maybe the Alvin Indians... Holmes will ask the question, what's wrong with the machines we got? Well, you know the Indians, <laughs> they play pretty good, don't they? they? Yeah, the they Indians do. have a very strong lobby in Alabama, and while they do a lot for the communities where they operate, you know, it, it's this is unfair to others who might want to offer the same product at, at a different facility and but, offer the same job opportunities. I mean, really. Well, and the thing is, mm -hmm. if it's if 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 the machines are not legal in in Greene County, 
They are not legal on the reservation. And they that, are not. That's an IGRA right. is very clear. Right. That's at a federal level. That's not now, an Alabama issue. It will, if, will Jeff Sessions order his attorney, uh, his U.S. attorney, to do anything? I mean, or will they just do what the Obama administration did? Sit it out. Right. And that's a big question. You know, Donald Trump's no fan of, uh, you know, casino gambling on, on tribal land. I think this is a wonderful thing that the Porch Creek have done down there. But they mm -hmm. don't deserve a monopoly. They deserve mm -hmm. what they're getting, but they don't deserve a monopoly. I, I agree with that. You know, and, and they're... They, and others you know, deserve the opportunity. They've got two sets of lobbyists. they got one set of lobbyists that's some good folks that want to do what's right by the... Try. They got another set that wants this fighting to continue to continue. Because so they, they continue make money. to get paid. That's right. Yeah, as long as the issues in the air, the lobbyists are getting employed. That's what it comes down to. Well, you need them for rolling. a lot of other things to remind you how stupid you are once in a while. That's true. All right, Jack. Uh, <laughs> our buddy Steve Flyers uh, has. As he's uh, called in Albertville. Yeah. Well, he's, <laughs> I thought everybody called him Flyers. Yeah. That's anyway. <laughs> Uh, he has uh, laid out the governor's derby. You think he's left off a few names, but he's got Roy Moore, Twinkle, uh, Kavanaugh, and John McMillan, and a few others. Young Boozer, Jim Ziegler, uh, Merrill, the uh, Secretary of State, uh, Tommy Battle, Del Marsh, and then uh, Johnny Come Lately, Tommy Tupperville. Yeah. Has yeah. actually done a poll, and I think he's leaning heavily toward running. It'll be very interesting. That's a. That's a crowded field. Yeah. And it's, it may get more crowded. Yeah. Well, Beth, what are you hearing on the Democratic side? Um, it looks to be about the same level of a circus. I mean, from what I'm hearing, everybody's crowding up to the top of the ticket on the Democratic side. And, you know, in the past, somebody who came with a big checkbook would say, okay, no, you're going to run for governor. You're going to run for lieutenant governor. You're going to run for secretary of state. And so what I'm afraid of is that the Democrats were all going to crowd up to the top of the ticket. And then we're going to have all these down ballot races go unopposed. And so we, we don't have a party structure that's able well, to. Well, Sue Bell Cobb, kind of who a lot of people are saying is going to be a contender for governor. That's well, there's about 15 names that are on the list right now. And I don't think after Sue Bell resigned on everybody that she's really going to have to, she's going to have to work to get her way back into oh, the party. Oh, there's no the party. question about that. Well, so, and she's a woman, unfortunately, in our state. It's harder for women. It it's is. harder mm -hmm. nationally for women, isn't it, Jack? Well, she was elected chief justice. She's got gravitas, but she quit her job she before raised, it ended. What, yeah, but sometimes if you it. put salve on that gravitas, it'll but, go away. <laughs> shape you every time. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I want to move on to something that's really good happening. This will this will work itself out. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, workforce development folks, Jimmy Baker, who's now the chancellor of the two-year system, they are pushing jobs, Susan. They want to train our, our allow our young people to train early to get mm -hmm. good good jobs, skilled jobs, so that they can make a decent living for their family. Uh, yeah, according to Jeff Lynn and some of those involved, you know, there are jobs out there. The problem is we don't have skilled workers to fill those positions. Right. So what I think they're going to try to do with this is do a type of dual enrollment. Mm -hmm. But instead of a dual enrollment to do your core requirements that Beth and I were talking about, it's going to be more to train in a skill. And that mm -hmm. way they can get these workers up and running faster. Uh, in, well, into the, the work And course. they are committed to it, and I think it's, a, it's really a good idea. Right. And this is something that has existed on the district level, the school district level for a while. I think taking it statewide is fantastic. Yeah. And what they're doing with the workforce development is also they're partnering <laughs> the employers with the potential employees and doing it through the school mm -hmm. so that you have a, a, a network here to be able to get people from one place to the yeah, other. Yeah, they're trying it's to make perfect. it seamless. Right. And I, mm -hmm. think, right. I think this is a great idea. I, have full faith and confidence in Jimmy Baker and 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 Mr. Yeah. Lando yeah, we had yeah. on the and show. And I'm thrilled that somebody with a project has a plan. We're gonna have to leave it right there. You're watching the V coming up next. Speaker Mac McCutcheon in the People's House.
Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We're in the People's House with Speaker Mac McCutcheon. Mr. Speaker, thank you for having us. Thank you for joining us. It's good to have you here. Uh, it, it was a good time to take a break, let everybody step back and, and get a little rest and see where they're going. I'd like, if you would, to, to just kind of give our audience some idea of some of the things that have been accomplished over the last six weeks and the things that you think uh, have been very important and very positive. I mean, getting the budget has been amazing. Well, it has. There's been a lot of good work done on the general fund budget. As you know, the uh, general fund budget uh, initiated in the House, the education budget initiated in the Senate. The Senate is working on the education budget. It's on the floor. Uh, hopefully, when we come back the first week of April, they're going to address the, the education budget uh, early in the morning, so by the end of day, we hope that the House has the education budget. The general fund budget, of course, was passed out of the House and sent to the Senate. And uh, we, we had some very heated debate. It was some good debate over the general fund, but uh, like you said, there's been a lot of work that went into it. So right. Chairman Klaus and the House uh, general fund committee, I commend them for the work they've done. So I was, you know, this is very early to get the budgets out of the way. I mean, is this something that you really push for? Yes, it is. This is something that uh, we've been trying to do for several years, and uh, it's a priority. And, you know, when you look at the responsibility of the legislature to the people of Alabama, uh, passing the budgets is, is priority. And so uh, I think we should be addressing them early, and that gives us time to work on issues that come up along, that are connected to the budgets right. as we work forward. So. So yeah, this is this is this is good for the people. Well, it was we were all a little bit surprised it came so early because in the past we sort of thought, well, they used the budget as kind of a carrot and a stick, but mm -hmm. but you wanted to get that carrot and stick out of the way and get get that business aside. Yeah, I mean we we've got state services that need to be uh, uh, the the agencies need to be preparing and getting ready for the new budget, uh, and and those those services. Uh, are one of the most important things we do as a state government for the people of Alabama, right. provide these services, public safety, courts, uh, prison systems, uh, all of those things come into play. So that's a very important. The state is still struggling to, I mean, we're still struggling after 2008 and all the things that happened then. We're, everything's getting better, but not where we'd like for it to be. So we don't have the money to do all the things we want to do, including giving a pay raise to some of the state employees, and, and we've heard a lot about that, but what, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I honestly feel like every member in this House uh, would have liked to have had enough money in that budget to give the state employees a raise. Do they need a raise? Yes. They have worked very hard, uh, were very supportive of our state employees. Uh, th there were some issues uh, tied to the state employees. The, uh, I think it's important uh, that the state employees as well as the people realize is that the insurance cost to keep the state employees benefit package, uh, uh, number one, a, a good package, but also keep the cost down right. for the state employees, takes money that we have to put in. So in, if, if you went back over the last few years, we've been giving a 2% plus raise right. to state employees by compensating their uh, benefit package, right. primarily their insurance coverage and their retirement. So by doing that, we are supporting them, but it, it would be nice if we could give them a check right. and increase that. So because of that, uh, we, uh, uh, we looked at the fact that many of our state employees that have not topped out are getting their merit raises. Right. Uh, you know, we, 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 we tried to look back at the different agencies to make sure that this was going on. And so we know that the state employees are still getting their merit raises, but those that have topped out, uh, those are the ones we were most concerned about. Right. And uh, so at the end of the day, we, we just realized that we just didn't have the money. The money was not there. Well, and that, that's been an issue. I mean, it, it, it and probably will continue to be an issue going forward for some time. You, you were talking about the insurance for the state employees, insurance, Medicaid, this is, this is still an unknown now. You sent a budget up that, that has money, but we don't even know where that money's going to go because we don't know what the federal government's going to do. Well, yes, we, 
the Medicaid program, uh, it's moving. Over the last 10 years, uh, we, 10 years ago, we made a supplement to Medicaid uh, of uh, $400 million. Right. 10 years later, we're making supplements to Medicaid of $800 million. So it's doubled in, the, in 10 years. Right. The, the cost continues to rise. And, and we, we expect, because of inflation, the cost of health care, you, you anticipate increases automatically every year. But it has grown at such a rate, it is literally sucking dollars out of our general fund that could be going to state employees' pay raise. It could be going to our courts and public safety. And because of that, uh, we are working on some plans with the RCO, Regional Care right. Centers. We're working on a plan to try to at least level out some of that cost so it's not increasing so much. And uh, with that comes some added cost, upfront cost that we're looking at. But one of the good things that we did, we had the BP money, and we uh, managed that money to where that we were able to get this year's budget online for Medicaid. Then we had the ask coming up for the budget cycle we're uh, working on right. right now. And uh, we had an increase there that we had to pay. And then one of the other things that we're able to do is that the House held the line on uh, some additional funds for next year's budget for Medicaid. Okay. So uh, hopefully we'll not be in the hole as deep as we thought we might be if we can hold that line and not spend all of that money. Right. So that, that, was, that was a big uh, point of, of debate on the floor. They're saying, well, we've got these agencies that need increases, why don't we just spend that money? But thank goodness there were some members in the House right. that said, hey, wait a minute, we've got a year coming in 2018 right. to where we know we're, we're going to be $100 million in the hole. Let's try to manage our money a little better. We want to thank Speaker McCutcheon for joining us each week in the People's House. This week, we lost a public servant and a heck of a nice guy, always a friend to us, Crum Foshi, passed away at home, and he, he will be missed, Jack. You knew him a long time. I, I, I did, he's a great guy, and uh, we will miss uh, Crum, and we uh, send our sympathy to Cherie, his mm -hmm. wife. You know, the last gas tax passed <laughs> was by Crumb Foshi. Well, he would tell you that, too. I think he did. He would say, I passed the last gas. gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, he will be missed. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us, because we watch them. <laughs>